Prayaschita, Sanskrit, Prayaschita is the Sanskrit word which means atonement, penance, expiation. It refers to one of the corrective measures in Dharma Sastra as an alternative to incarceration or other forms of danda, punishment, when someone is convicted of certain categories of crimes. The word is also used in Hindu texts to refer to actions to expiate one's errors or sins, such as adultery by a married person. Those texts that discuss prayaschita, states Robert Lingett, debate the intent and thought behind the improper act, and consider penance appropriate when the effect had to be balanced, but cause was unclear. The roots of this theory are found in the Brahmana layer of text in the Samaveda. History and meaning The term prayaschita, and variations such as prayaschiti, appear in the Vedic literature. However, in some instances such as in Taittiriya Samhita verses 2.1.2.4 and 5.1.9.3, these words simply imply, "...accidental happening or mishap." and associated sense of remorse, and their context has nothing to do with "...sin." In other cases, such as in Taittiriya Samhita 5.3.12.1, the word prayaschiti appears with the meaning of expiation for a sin. The error or mistake mentioned in the ancient Hindu texts, such as the Brahmana and Aranyaka layers of Vedic texts, as well as various sutras and shastras, include those related to ritual procedure such as letting the altar fire go out, or unintentional breaking a cooking pot, or an intentional inappropriate conduct, and any range of events where a person feels remorseful. A generic definition of prayaschita in the Sruti texts is provided by Shabara in his commentary on Mimamsa Sutra 12.3.16. He states that they are of two types. One category of prayaschita are those to correct anything ritual related that emerges from one's neglect or heedlessness, while the others are atonement for not doing what one must or doing what one must not. Most sources state the word prayaschita originates from praya and sata, which Kane states respectively mean austerity and a resolve. However, some Indian scholars such as Hemadri state that praya implies destruction, while sata implies joining together or joining together what was destroyed, making good what was lost. A third derivation for the word is in Samavidana Brahmana, where it is composed of pra, aya and sata, which translates to observances after knowing a certain thing has happened. Yet a fourth definition ties it to sin, wherein it is asserted to be composed of prayata and sita as in upasita, and here it means, "...actions that destroy sins." A sin, papa, or a dharma, not dharma, is any transgression, wrongdoing, misdeed or behavior inconsistent with dharma. Some scholarly literature spell prayaschita without diacritic as prayaschita or prayashita. Topic: Applicability The Smritis of Hinduism do not offer a consistent theory of prayaschitas. They differ between themselves if, when and what prayaschitas are applicable, and whether they are sufficient if the errors and sins were done intentionally or unintentionally. 
Furthermore, states Patrick Olivelle, the ancient and medieval manuscripts, relating to Preoscitas, that have survived show evidence of major corruption and interpolations over their history. For instance, Chapter 11 of Manumriti starts with the assertion that it will now discuss penance, preoscitas, but the 43 verses that follow have nothing to do with penance, and Olivelle suggests this is evidence of later interpolated replacement. The ancient texts suggest that there was a significant debate and disagreement between Dharma scholars on what is the appropriate and sufficient penance or punishment for a given crime. For example, some texts suggest suicide as penance, or capital punishment for the crime of incest or rape, but other texts consider this as disproportionate punishment. Theft is a grave sin in these texts, but the penance prescribed vary, with some texts questioning whether food eaten by an ox, without the permission of the owner of a fodder, qualifies as a sin for the owner of that ox. Similarly, there are major disagreements and acknowledgement of controversies within the texts on when and what conduct is inappropriate, whether and what penance must follow. The emphasis of the Hindu texts is on inner correction through penance, rather than imposed punishment. It is tied to the karma doctrine. Prayaschitas, that is penance to self-correct, are considered part of dharma. The Mahabharata for example, states Alf Hiltbeitel, asserts that one is not touched by a dharma if one inhabits the space where the Vedas, sacrifices, yajna, penance, prayaschitas. Truth, satya, restraint, dhamma, ahimsa, and dharma are joined together. Topic: <inaudible> Juvenile crimes and sins. Prayaschita in Hindu texts vary according to the age and capacity of a person. If a minor commits a sin such as drinking sura alcohol, he does not need to perform a penance. Instead, states Burhajama Smriti, the minor's guardian such as father, elder brother, family member or relative should perform the penance. If a juvenile under the age of five commits a crime, most ancient Hindu texts do not consider it a crime, as under five age are deemed unable to commit a crime or sin. No penance is required, but some texts argue that this only applies to minor infractions. The different Smriti texts vary in their recommendations on penances by ages. The definition of juvenile sins and crimes and age limit, sins and crimes by men above a certain age, women, who the sinner and the victim is, and whether the person is the sick and ailing. The intent behind the sin or crime is also a factor in these texts. The penance requirements are reduced or increased, based on the age, circumstances and intent, depending on the source. Pratyamnayas Pratyamnayas emerged in medieval era, as a form of penance appropriate to the age, the time and the strength of the sinner. They were asserted to be a kind of penance that purify a man without harming or causing undue distress to the sinner. Topic. Types. The Dharmasastras list many types of prayaschita or penance. These include Abhazasta, public confession, a person visits homes as a beggar, seeks forgiveness, confesses his crime and asks for food. 
Anatapa, repentance, a person loathes the evil he did, reminds and repeats to himself, I shall not do that again. Pranayama, restraint of breath, a person does breath control exercises similar to yoga. Tapas, a person performs austerity such as celibacy, wearing wet clothes till they dry on his body, sleeping on ground or fasting. Homa, a fire sacrifice accompanied with kusmanda mantras. Japa, muttering Vedic prayers, either audibly, inaudibly or mentally. Dana, giving away gifts such as cow, horse, land, butter, sesame seeds and food to the needy. Upavasa or vratas, restricting one's diet, such as by eating bland foods or small quantity as a self-reminder of penance, sometimes with vows. Tirtha pilgrimages, going on foot to distant pilgrimage sites, or to bathe in holy rivers, upavasa, restricting diet or fasting, and vrata with vow are the most common form of penance prescribed in Dharma texts of Hinduism. Topic. Pilgrimages Pilgrimages tirthayatra, to a tirtha, or holy place, are a type of prayaschita. Pilgrimages are not prominent in dharmasastras such as Manumriti and Yajnavalka Smriti, but they are founded in the epic Mahabharata and the Puranas. Most Puranas include large sections on Tirtha Mahatmaya along with tourist guides, particularly the Padma Purana, Skanda Purana, Vayu Purana, Kirma Purana, Bhagavata Purana, Narada Purana, and Bhavishya Purana. The Vishnu Dharma Sastra asserts that the type of sin that may be expiated through pilgrimages is referred to as Anupatakas, small sin, in contrast to Mahapatakas, major sin, that require other penances. According to Cain, many texts asserted that Tirtha Yatra journey to a holy place was a popular way for redemption of sins in the case of all classes of men and women. The texts assert that the man should take his wife with him, when proceeding to pilgrimage. However, some smirtas also call attention to the fact that doing one's duty as a householder is more important than going on pilgrimages, and it is only in special cases or once one has paid his three debts to his parents, his teacher, and the Vedas that he should resort to pilgrimages. The proper procedure for a pilgrimage is debated within the Smirtis, with questions such as whether one should cut his hair before a pilgrimage arising or whether a fast at the Tirtha is required. The mode of travel is also widely discussed, as to whether one may reap any benefit from traveling in a conveyance. The most widely accepted view appears to be that the greatest austerity comes from traveling on foot, and that the use of a conveyance is only acceptable if the pilgrimage is otherwise impossible. Raghunanda's Prayaschita Tattva asserts that the person seeking penance must give up 16 things when he reaches the Ganges River, including behavior such as praising another Tirtha, striking anyone, sexual dalliance, accepting gifts and giving one's used clothing as gifts to others. Topic. Vratas. The concept of vratas date back to the Arjveda, and it refers to self-imposed restrictions on food and behavior, sometimes with a vow. A vrata may be motivated by many factors, one of which may be expiatory 
A vrata can also be non-penance related voluntary vow or part of practice by a brahmacharya student or grihastha householders that they feel is obligatory before or during certain spiritual or religious practice. Utsavas, or religious festivals, share some elements with vratas. They may contain elements of are often difficult to distinguish from the practice of vratas. Vratas are discussed as a means to prayaschita in Dharmasastra texts. Many prayaschita vratas in these texts suggest it include the feeding of Brahmins, blind, poor, and helpless, as well as other acts of charity. However, a vrata can consist of many different activities. Other examples of vrata activity include fasting, burning incense sticks, prayers before a deity, meditating and such activities. The Smritis go into great detail on the subject of vratas, discussing even the details pertaining to what type of flowers should be used in worship. Men and women, state the Dharmashastras and the Puranas, can expiate their sins through the use of vratas. Likewise, any caste is able to expiate their sins through the use of vratas, though some only pertain to a specific caste. For prayaschita, the vratas are the second most discussed method in the Puranas, after the Tirtha. Santis Santis are rites a person undertakes to come to terms or create peace with fears, doubts, portents or omens. These include anxiety in an expectant mother, sounds or sights or dreams a person considers unlucky and others. Some texts, such as the Kaushika Sutra state that some Shanti rites are also a form of prayaschita. The Atharvaveda has sections on such rites and rituals. Repentance The Hindu Dharma texts such as Manumriti assert anatapa, or repentance to be an important form of prayaschita. Acknowledgement of an unjust act is considered a step towards inner reformation and the start of a purge of the effects of immorality. The texts recommend remorse and repentance to be accompanied with austerity and reflection, as well as study to gain jnana knowledge for redemption and return to a dharmic life. The term anatapa literally, following heat, is related to paskatapa literally, sorrow, regret. Topic. Procedures for penance Lauga Sigra proscribes the procedures for all penances, while others, like the Sankha and Madanaparijata also provide elaborate rules about undergoing procedures of prayaschitas. Some particular procedures a sinner must undergo include paring of nails, shaving his head, bathing with clay, cow dung, and holy water, drinking clarified butter, and making a declaration of performing the penance indicated by the assembly of the learned male Brahmins, all on the day prior to commencing his penance. On the next day, he is to bathe, perform sraddha and homa, and give gifts to the Brahmins and feed them. Also during the time of prayaschita, the sinner must observe certain rules on food and other matters. This includes that the sinner refrain from taking food at another's house, from sexual intercourse, from speaking at an improper time, and from everything that might cause him to feel strength or sexual passion. 
It is customary that when undergoing a penance, the sinner begins with a mantra that translates, O oh, fire, Lord of Radha. I shall perform a Vrata. Quote. In the same way, when one has finished his penance, he recites a mantra that translates, O oh, fire, Lord of Vratas, I have performed the Vrata, I had the strength to do it, may it be propitious for me. There are also particular virtues that should be practiced while doing penance such as honesty. These are known as yamas. Two kinds of prayaschita exist, one which is done openly, prakas, and one which is done secretly, rahasya. Many smirtas lay down rules about performing secret prayaschitas. One reason a man would perform a secret prayaschita is because no one but himself knows about the sin he has committed. A general rule exists that secret penances are meant for those who have consecrated the Vedic fires, who are disciplined, old or learned, and that the open penances are meant for other people. It is even said that women and sudras can perform secret penances because they too can give gifts and pranayamas, while some smirtas prescribe the enactment of a penance immediately as needed, some other place restrictions on the time i.e. the prayaschitatattva says that a penance should not commence on the 8th or 14th titha of the month. If one is in mourning, he may also wait to perform penance until the period of mourning has been completed. Topic. Overlap with Vyavahara Prayaschita is one of three sections that traditionally compose the Dharmashastras, the other two being Akara and Vyavahara. Vyavahara, technically, is the process, procedure and administration of justice. If convicted, some sins and crimes were specified to invite penance while others punishment danda. Intentional murder, for instance, was specified to have the punishment of death. This punishment is counted both in a legal sense and as part of the prayaschita section. This combining of penance with legal procedure appears to make the prayaschita more effective as penance ending in death can result in full expiation from intentional sins. Some texts impose a time scale, wherein prayaschita increases the longer the crime or sin goes uncorrected. <laughs> 